For this problem, we have a charge density that varies with radius only. So uh, we have symmetry still by our sides here. Um, since uh, density of a solid sphere only varies by radius and not by angle, that's a pretty good symmetry problem. So we know we're gonna probably use Gauss's law for this. Now for the first part though, uh, they're asking us to just find alpha with respect to Q. And right now we don't have any Q term in here. So what we can do is we can make a Q term by just invoking what Q is relative to rho. Uh, we know that rho, uh, especially if it's a variable, is equal to dQ over dV. So therefore, if you want to get Q, it would be rho dV, taking the integral of both sides. For all Q inside a sphere, we're going to get Q is equal to from R to R naught, rho dV of a solid sphere. So now let's go ahead and plug in rho here and get you know, alpha and R in terms of Q by solving this integral. So Q total, to be implied it's total, is equal to the integral from zero to R naught of alpha R squared dV. Now the problem is dV is not in terms of R, which is what we want. Uh, looking back into your calculus, a sphere dV is going to equal to four pi R dr. Now this is for a sphere who uh, components are symmetrical in the angle field and only varies in the R field. So only in dr does this function, this integrand, uh, vary. If it varies with theta, then it's a whole different dv, as you might uh, have learned in calculus already. So for symmetrical uh, integrands, dv for a sphere is just 4 pi r dr. So q is then equal to 0 to r naught alpha r squared four pi r dr. Let's make this look a little prettier and take out all the constants. Four pi alpha from zero to r naught of r cubed dr. And I apologize, I made a small mistake. It's actually gonna be r squared here. So um, dv for a sphere is actually four pi r squared dr. So we're going to go ahead and propagate those changes down here. This becomes r to the fourth dr. So I apologize for that uh, mistake there. So now q is going to be 4 pi alpha. The integral of r to the fourth respect to dr is going to be r to the fifth divided by 5. Integral taken from 0 to r naught. Now this is then going to end up being 4 fifths pi r naught to the fifth alpha, okay? And that's gonna be Q. So now solving for alpha, which is what A required us to do, is just isolating alpha, and that's gonna be alpha is equal to five Q divided by four pi r naught to the fifth. And that's our answer. Now for part B, they ask us to find the electric field as a function of radius only inside the sphere. Um, if it had to be outside the sphere, then of course we can invoke that physics concept where um, all the charge is, con or we make believe all the charge is concentrated at the center of the sphere and the E field would simply just be KQ over R squared, R being the distance from outside the sphere or from the center of the sphere. But since we're dealing with inside the sphere where rho varies with r, we're going to go ahead and invoke two things. We invoke the fact that this problem is symmetrical and the fact that we have a variable charge density to give us a reason to use Gauss's law. That is e dot dA integral is equal to Q enclosed 
divided by epsilon naught. Now again, why do we use Gauss's law except to hopefully make life easier for us? So hopefully we don't even have to do this integral. And it so happens that we don't. Because of the symmetry and uh, because of the fact that E does not alter with respect to uh, which part of the area the Gaussian is on the Gaussian curve, then we can say that this can be taken out of the integral. See the dot product basically just means that E has to be parallel with the area vector and it always is. And di, dA just means that perhaps E varies with dA, which actually it doesn't. So the integral of all of this just ends up being E times A. That's gonna to equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. All right, so the point here is to try to find E. Let's go ahead and say E then is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught A. Thing is, we don't know what Q enclosed is, especially for uh, inside the sphere. Outside the sphere, we know that Q enclosed is simply just gonna be Q, which is given in the problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, figure out what Q enclosed is in this Gaussian curve by invoking the charge density equation. So Q enclosed is the integral of the charge density times four pi r squared dr. And this is this was the dv for a sphere, okay? Rho is equal to alpha r squared. So we're gonna say alpha r squared four pi r squared dr. Again, this is very similar to this. The only difference here is that we're gonna go from zero to r, which is the radius of the Gaussian enclosure. So instead of going over the entire radius of the sphere, we're only going over the little enclosure um, that we made in terms of the Gaussian shape. So the answer is actually gonna be the same as this, except with r instead of r naught. And you can do this equation or you can do this derivation with the upper limit of the integral being r instead of r naught to come to the same conclusion. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that, say dot, 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 and say that is then equal to four fifths pi, as put alpha first, r to the fifth, and not r naught, but r. Let's go ahead and plug that in here. So E ends up being four pi alpha r to the fifth divided by five epsilon naught A. Now let's go ahead and get A of this Gaussian curve uh, to be something that's a bit more familiar to us. A of a arbitrary Gaussian curve is just gonna be four pi, especially if it, sorry, it's, it's a sphere, it's gonna be four pi r squared, okay? So that's the area of a Gaussian curve, a spherical Gaussian curve of radius r. We're gonna go ahead and eliminate a few items here. r squared turns this fifth power into the third power. And uh, we end up getting E is equal to alpha r to the third, over five epsilon naught, okay? Now again, this is pretty cool. I can, I can be happy with this, uh, except if we really wanna get uh, this in terms of something that's more familiar to the problem itself, we can eliminate alpha by plugging in this and we'll get everything in terms of just Q, R naught, and R. So let's go ahead and do that with the limited space I have left. So it'd be five Q R cubed over four pi R naught fifth times five epsilon naught. So that's just plugging in the alpha up here and then uh, bringing the rest over. Um, the five will cancel out and I believe that's it. So E ends up being Q R to the third divided by four pi epsilon naught times r naught to the fifth power. And that is the solution to part B.